Hello, this is Javier Ruiz, partner at JKI. Um, today I'm going to show you how to use the JKI.NET system exec toolkit uh, for LabVIEW. So if you want to download it, you have a couple of options. Uh, you can go to vipm.io and just search for JKI.NET. And this is going to be find you the toolkit. And you can go ahead and install it from here. Um, I already have it installed. The other way of finding it is uh, on your VAPM application. Just do the same thing. Just search for JKI uh, .net, and that will bring it here. And from here, you can double click and install it. I already have it installed, so I'm not going to do it. But you can install it from here. So after you install it, then you're going to be able to use it. Um, in LabVIEW. So I have a demo project here that I created. So also a demo VI. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to show you where where the palette is located. So you would navigate to JKI tools, JKI.NET system exec, and this would be the palette. So you have a create, uh, run, uh, you can write to the standard input, and then you can destroy it. So I think the easiest way to get started is to look at the examples. And I'm going to open the example that comes here. So let's take a look at what what's under the hood. So um, you'll see that we use the, the VI that I mentioned. So we create we create the, an instance, we run it, and we write and destroy it. So for creating it, you're going to pass um, a few things. Let's look at the context help. So you're going to pass the, the command line argument. Uh, this is basically which process, which Windows process you want to run, which application you want to run, any arguments that you want to pass in, uh, what's the working directory, and that's basically it. Then you can also decide to auto run the process. Um, if you select false, then you can manually run it later. If you set it to true, then you there's no need to do the run process anymore because it would run uh, right away. One thing that is interesting is after you create, you get an output, which is uh, a set of public events. So if you look at this output, um, there's two user events that you can register to. One is the standard out and one is the standard error. And this is how you actually get um, the information that the process that you launch is sending you. So this is a standard, it's a cluster with two user events that you can register for. And after that, you can pass it to the dynamic uh, registration on a, uh, on an event, uh, on a user event structure. Um, let me keep the, in an event structure. So let's look at what, what this does, but so again, if you if you set auto launch fall auto run false, then you're gonna have to run it manually. And I think that's my preferred way so that I can make sure that I register for the events from right after creation before running, just in case uh, there's events that are being sent before um, I can actually grab them here. I want to register uh, as soon as possible. Then what you'll see is that. Um, when when the user clicks send, which is this button here, we're going to actually send a line to the uh, standard input stream. And this is going to send it to the process that is running so that it can listen for it, so that it can use the data. Um, and then after that, whenever we're done with destroy, there's nothing, nothing else on this application. So let's run it really quick so that you see what it does. Uh, so I'm going to run it right now. It's by default using the, the C directory. Um, the first thing that you get out of the command.exe is just the standard Windows message. So you'll get that in the standard out um, string control. And if we look here, when you register, you register to two events. So there's a standard out. And the standard out is going to send you a string that right now I'm using to just concatenate to a growing string that I'm going to display on the standard out indicator. And I do the same thing for the standard error. You get the you get the string, and then you concatenate it and show it here. The other trick I'm using here in this example is I'm scrolling 
the indicator all the way to the bottom so that uh, you keep seeing the newest the newest uh, message right away so so you see this message I mean because I'm running the command exe you can do the common windows uh, the typical windows command so I'm gonna do a there to get the directory information so that's gonna send me the directory information so that's exactly what I would expect so um, another another command you could try is basically I, I want to get into the users folder for example so I could do CV users so right now I'm, I'm in the users folder so if I do another there then I'm gonna get whatever is inside of that directory so uh, this is a simple example using the command that you see um, to highlight the difference between the standard out and the standard error um, if you do a command that doesn't exist say uh something whatever right so if i do this then you're gonna get an error from the process that is telling you this is not a recognized command so that's the difference between standard error and standard out um which is really important and you you're gonna want to subscribe to both um so that you get both i mean at the end of the day if you're writing an application that is kind of like a terminal window you may want to combine them uh, but you have the choice of keeping them separate or just logging the error. So um, I wanted to give you that flexibility. Um, all right, so that's the simplest example. Uh, now I'm going to show you an example of uh, what if you want to call a different process or a different application. So let me create a copy um, of this VI and I'm going to call it um, example Python script. So I'm going to actually run a Python script so that you see it. All right, so uh, I'm going to keep it the same. Of course, you can modify anything you want. Uh, but what I'm going to do is first, instead of calling the command application, I'm going to call Python. And I already have Python installed, so this is going to work. And for arguments, I'm going to right away call a uh, Python script that I have under the same folder of my application that is called outputs.py. So if you look at what I have on the outputs.py, it is a really simple example. Um, I'm doing a four to five times, I'm printing hello world with the counter. And then I am sleeping for one second. One thing you'll notice is that we're flushing the standard out. So for Python specifically, if you wanna send the print information right away, to the standard out, you're gonna wanna flush it right here. Otherwise, you're gonna get it once Python stops running. Um, so if you're using Python, just keep this in mind. Um, all right, the other thing I'm gonna do is um, I'm gonna want to, instead of just doing C, I'm going to want to uh, actually go into this folder that I have here. Um, so this is actually C users desktop slash uh, .NET exec demo. All right, so I'm gonna navigate to this directory and that's where my, my outputs.py is contained. Um, I'm not gonna send any command right away. So I'm running it and then boom, first thing I get is right away the python script is sending me um, whatever is is printing so if you think about it that's really powerful because uh, one thing is you can use the regular labview system exec vi to run a python script but you cannot live get information while it's running so um, this is something that you can you can do and it works really well uh, you can do this with any other application, but I wanted to show you the Python example. Um, so let me stop this. And of course, if you run it right away, again, then you'll get the, the same thing. So um, you can think that that Python script could be as complicated or as simple as you want, right? And then if you want to get information uh, to the user while it's running, maybe you're running uh, an automated test for uh, for some manufacturing process, you could just print and flush the standard out, and then that that would get the user 
uh, real-time information about what's going on, right? So um, say we want to do something like um, step one or step and then the number and then plus started, right? And then something like that, um, which is kind of more of what you probably want to do. So you could do that and we're going to get that. So step zero started, step one started, right? Maybe you need a space here. Um, but that's that's another example and, and really, really useful of what you can do. Um, I hope you enjoy the, the toolkit. Please feel free to reach out to um, info at jki.net if you have any questions or comments or visit our website or if you want to uh, post a comment or give us feedback, uh, you can go to vipm.io and then find the, the package that you like and um, click on post an idea um, and, and that would allow you to comment uh, and, and whoever developed the tool is going to get an email so that you can interact with them. Also, if you like if you like the, the toolkit, make sure to give it a star. Uh, that's how people know that uh, you found it useful and it helps the community know that this is a useful tool and they should be a, they, they should should check it out um all right i think that's it um i'll talk to you next time uh hopefully you enjoy the tool and i hope to hear uh some of your feedback